William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. One thing about a corpse, you can be sure, folks. Everybody's always trying to palm it off on the next guy. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. A wise man once said a good detective's brain is in his feet. I guess he meant footwork solves more crimes than brain work. Oh, mister, my aching metatarsal. In my business, you rest your feet every chance you get. Any raised surface. Desk, table, the friendly lap. Off go your shoes and up go your feet. Ah. On this occasion, I had my feet high off the floor in a tavern. Downtown along Bail Bond Row, waiting for a bail bondsman named Soloway. Sam Soloway. We had a date set up. Soloway poured his troubles out to me on the telephone. A rogues gallery pinup boy, Joey Florio, had skipped, leaving Soloway holding the bag for bail bond money. A cash loss big enough to give any bondsman a heart failure. $50,000. My feet were asleep when Soloway finally showed. A sad-faced little guy who looked as if he'd like nothing better than a good cry. Mm, Mr. Craig. Soloway, pull up a chair. I, uh, I kept you waiting. Through heartache, stardust, and melancholy baby. Huh? The, uh, juice box over there. It's been crying for half an hour. You look mopey, Sam. Mopey? Somebody should have strangled me before I became a bail bondsman. Craig, you've got to catch me a rat. Joey Florio? Joey Florio. He jumped bail, yes. But he's still here in New York. What makes you so sure? You know, one thing, the police have every exit covered. Also, on the grapevine, I was tipped off that Florio stuck around to wind up his business. Close his horse parlors, collect all the cash he can, like a, like a man going away for a long time. Going where? Europe, somewhere. He's going to catch a plane for Europe. Just like that, huh? A fugitive racketeer under indictment breezes into an airport all smiles and climbs aboard a plane. Oh, he has nerve, Joey Florio. It took nerve to become a high muck-a-muck of the racket. Exactly what do you want of me, Sam? Catch Joey Florio. I'll give you 10% of the bond money you saved me. You're a sucker for hiring me on the side. You've got the whole police department working for you for free, gratis. I feel safer with one man working for $5,000. Just how do you expect me to cover the airports? I've only got two arms and legs. Well, hire people. Just show me an expense account. Cover the airports and then cover my funeral. Because if I lose $50,000 on account of a rat like Florio, I'm positively going to shoot myself through the head. Hear that song, Sam? Hmm. Sad, huh? So what? It's my nickel. The song takes me back, Sam. Way back. My first long pants. A girl named Glory. A fine time for reminiscences. Blonde curls down to her shoulders. We had a portable Victrola going in a rowboat on Prospect Park Lake. Moon dust. The record we were playing was moon dust. Craig, please, you've got a job to do. Oh, maybe I should have married her, Sam. Well, better you remain the bachelor. A shamus in a world of hoodlums. How long can you live? Why take a nice girl and make a widow? Oh, Sam, come off it. You sure loused up a memory for me. I covered the airports to keep Soloway, the bondsman, from attending his own funeral as threatened. I hired a half a dozen stooges for ten dollars a day and smoke. Get on your stations, men. It's a 24-hour watch, so load your pockets with K-rations and carry a change of socks. The guy who comes up with Florio gets a $200 bonus and my love. Chance in a million. But I kept it going for a week with as much action as a nice box salesman at the North Pole. 
Then I gave up. Galloway, this is Barry Craig. That tip you got on Florio was a dud. I'm canceling out as of now. I'll send you a bill. Uh-uh. Coke seems no good. Neither is throwing hysterics. Keep my men squatting in the airport any longer and they'll start charging us rent. Goodbye now. I was through with Joey Florio's disappearance. That is, I thought I was through with it. I found out different exactly two hours after I crossed Soloway off my list of clients. The discovery began with me dragging up the ramshackle staircase in the midtown fire trap I had an office in. I'd about negotiated the walk-up when a scream stopped me dead in my tracks. At the top of the landing, I got a look at the screamer. It was Polly, the old Polish cleaning lady, complete with mop and buckets, staring banjo-eyed at a corpse curled up at her feet. A corpse in a merchant marine get-up. It took long minutes for Polly to find her voice. This man... This corpse. He come upstairs and knock at your door, Miss Craig. He knock once, twice. Then the other man... The killer. He sneak up behind him. And me. stabbed him. Which way did the knife go? Uh-huh. Not down, not with me on the staircase. Up! He go up to the roof. Stick around, I'll be right back. I was right back, empty-handed. The roof led to skate eight exits in a four-block square. A perfect setup for a killer making his escape. I dragged the stiff into my office and then talked to Polly some more, getting nowhere. Now tell me, the knifer, what did he look like? Bad. A bad face. I see that face and I know that man no good. Sure, sure. There were character bumps on his face and you read them. But draw me a picture, huh? Height, build, how he was dressed, some identifying marks, maybe. Oh, a short man. Yeah. And his hat pulled down yeah. over his face. I never forget. He stabbed the sailor, then he stabbed him again. And again, and then again, yeah. Four separate wounds. I've counted them, but uh, give me more description. He's a short man, and he's hot over his eyes. I never forget. A description to fit every second guy you pass on the street. I shoot Polly, and before calling the police department and making a clam bake out of it, I checked the dead man's pocket. There was nothing in them. Nothing to identify him. Just three crumpled dollar bills. Some silver, pocket knife, chewing tobacco, a key ring, and a clipping from a newspaper gossip column. Clipping about me. Confidential investigator Barry Craig, latest recruit in citywide search for Joey Florio. It is rumored that the missing mobster is worth 5000 to Craig, if he catches him. Picking my brains over why an unidentified merchant seaman would come see me and get murdered doing it when the phone rang. Craig speaking. I got information for you about Joey Florio. That is, if you're interested. Who am I talking to? General Grant. What kind of a guy? Look, I like knowing who I'm talking to. Then you're not interested in what I have to say. All right, I'm interested. What about Florio? He's at the Freedom Hotel on the Bowery. Making out he's a bum. Whoever said he wasn't. Well, uh, if you wish to get over there right away. Why right away? Florio's all set to move on to somewhere else. If you really want him, it's gonna be right away. I see. Tell me now, General, sleeping up in that tomb on Riverside Drive like you've been, how'd you know I was interested in finding Joey Florio? It's been in the papers. I read it in the column. And why are you so interested in double-crossing Florio? For a cut in the five G's you're going to collect. Oh, how will I know who to pay a cup to if you don't identify yourself? I'll be around to collect when you catch Florio. Better hop to it on a double. Florio's not going to sit around waiting for you. Come on. I didn't go for the phony tip on where to find Joey Florio right away yet. Ten years as a confidential operative and you don't jump at bait like a steel in Central Park. You don't swallow everything an anonymous jerk disguising his voice on the telephone tells you. It's figured. Somebody wanted me out of my office, and right away. I stuck around to find out why, in a closed closet with my office lights out. I kept the closet door ajar just enough and waited for development. I didn't 
didn't have to wait too long. There was a knock on my door. <laughs> Somebody was satisfying himself that I was really out. I watched the door open and close, and the flashlight played slowly around the room. A lady caller it was. Blonde heartthrob and ballerina slippers and a page boy bob. I watched her bend over the court, open his shirt, reach in and unbutton a pouch he wore around his middle, something I'd never thought to look for. I had the pouch out of her hand in one grab. I'll take it, sister. No. He went right to it, huh? Like you knew exactly where he kept it. Give it back. The way you frisked that cough. No nerves. No squeamishness. You could hire her out to an embalmer. Give me the pouch. Suppose we see what's in it together, beautiful. Real chummy like. Oh. Well, ship's papers, huh? Stacy Crocker, signed to the Star of Sharon. The date's freshly stamped like... Uh-oh. Pardon me for taking my eyes off you. Now. Hand those papers back at once or I'll shoot. Oh, don't, please. I'm fond of this suit. Your papers? Here. They're all yours. I ought to kill you. For identifying the stiff before you could get at your gun? Who killed him? I don't know. Now try for four dollars. Who was your stooge on the telephone with me a half hour ago? I don't know what you're talking about. For eight dollars now, really concentrate on this one. Where's Joey Florio? I never heard of Joey Florio. Baby, let's not kid. But I'm not... Who is Joey Florio? And why should I know anything about him? Skip it. You going to shoot me before you leave? If you try to stop me. Oh, I won't. Not a bright. I'll pick you up some other time when your gun isn't showing <laughs> You'll know who I am and just where to find me. Yeah, I'll know who you are by your picture. My picture? What picture? <laughs> Joke, I'm only kidding. Goodbye now, beautiful. If you're going. <laughs> but I wasn't kidding. Blondie'd had her picture taken the minute she'd come waltzing in the door. An electric eye camera tooled into the far wall and trained on the door. Open my door and get photographed. I'd be looking her up, but later. First, I wanted the corpse removed from my premises, a gift from me to the good police lieutenant, Trav Rogers. After that, I wanted to know more about Stacy Crocker and the star of Sharon. Police headquarters, Lieutenant Trav Rogers, please. Tell him it's his mortician friend calling, Barry Craig. <laughs> My interview later aboard the Star of Sharon, anchored off Pier 20, was short and sweet. The Captain Jameson was positive that he'd never seen or heard of a Stacy Crocker. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can tell you, Mr. Craig. Nothing whatsoever. A Stacy Crocker never shipped on the Star of Sharon, and to the best of my knowledge, was never assigned to this letter. But he had Star of Sharon papers on him, Captain. I saw them with my own eyes only an hour ago. Well, I can't answer for that, except that there's lots of bogus papers around. And lots of bogus talk. What? Lots of bogus talk. Why, you... Uh-uh. Try throwing me over the side and we'll both play polywog in a drink. Thanks for nothing, Captain. <laughs> Leaving the star of Sharon on my way to police headquarters, somebody decided it was time to discourage me a little. A high-powered rifle shot from somewhere in an empty row of dilapidated buildings along West Street. It breezed close enough to my skull to give me a head cold. I got moving on the double. Better luck at police headquarters. Trav Rogers had wormed into the case as snug as he could get. About that corpse, Craig. Oh, the corpse that uh, Ivy gave? <laughs> the next time you send a medal, make it a box of candy. <laughs> you were saying? Daisy Crocker was a professional informer. He'd come through with vital information for a fee. Then Crocker came to me with information to sell. I'd say so. Got any idea who murdered him? No, not yet. You mean you're not telling? I mean I don't know. What about the girl, Sam? Does the picture match anything in police files? I suppose I'm a fool to tell you. Yes, it matches a picture filed with us when she applied for a nightclub hat checker's license. A nightclub hat checker's license? Why the skeptical look? She wore ballerina slippers. You know, capiccio. No heels. Low to the floor. So? So I'm a little disillusioned. And a little crazy. I have a license application here. Her name is Myrna Wilson. 
The address she gave us is the Hotel Mohansic. What's your uh, position in this case, Craig? The usual 100% cooperation with the department. I'm your boy, and I don't cost you a cent. Jolly silly of you. Who brought you into the case? Joey Florio is bail bondsman, Sam Soloway. I was to get 10% of the bond money if I beat the department to Florio. Does the murder of Stacy Crocker and the Smyrna Wilson have to do with Joey Florio? If I said yes, I'd only be guessing. Well, I'll have to tear myself away now. Uh, keep in touch, Barry. Let's not compete. Sure, I'll keep in touch. Any cops I meet, you get first introduction. Oh, Trev. Yes, Craig. The star of Sharon. When does she sail? Midnight tonight. I suggest you search her from stem to stern. Just in case the disappeared Joey Florio does tie in with the murder of Crocker. And just in case Florio picks the star of Sharon as his way out. We have searched the star of Sharon. While you had your feet up on my desk and ordered my office around, I had 20 men go over every inch of the star of Sharon. Ah, oh, clever man. I'm going to tell a taxpayer about you. Blondie was next on the agenda. A residential dump. The Hotel Mohansic. A lobby full of nice old ladies clacking their dentures. Sedate room clerk tending strictly to business. The business of taking numbers, that's. The dump reeked with refinement. If Blondie was surprised to see me, she didn't show it. As a matter of fact, it looked like she'd expected me and prepared for it. Soft lights and sweet music. There were hors d'oeuvres on a tray. Cordial glasses set around a colored decanter. And the smell of incense everywhere in the room. Is the party for me? If you want it to be, very good. You're uh, not surprised I came right to you? No. I knew you would somehow, sooner or later. You see, I made inquiries about you. Your reputation. What did my boosters say? That you're a bloodhound on the sense that you get things done. My ears are blushing pink. What are you softening me up for? I need a friend. A boyfriend? A champion. How about a patsy? No, I wouldn't be fool enough to underestimate you like that. I'm in desperate trouble. You're not kidding Let's get rid of the musical background, huh? That merchant seaman was very, very dead. I had nothing to do with his murder, I swear. You tried to prevent my identifying him? Yes, but only that. Why only that? Stacy Crocker was an informer. He'd gone to your office to disclose certain confidential information. I already know that. Confidential information involving me. Involving you and what? Uh, robbery. I used my job as hatchet girl to play lookout for jewels worn by wealthy patrons. Here, I'll show you. Where? Are they real? Very real. Rings, brooches, tiaras, loot. How did you manage to steal them after scouting them? You don't look like a society raffle to me. I, uh, had a partner. And the lucky sidekick? Uh, Tex Kirby. I'm telling you the truth, Mr. Craig. Uh... Barry. Barry, huh? We're really getting cozy now. But let's hear Kirby's version of it. Hear Kirby's version, but how... But where is Kirby? Watch how I materialize people, beautiful. Okay, Kirby, you can come out of the kitchen now and join the party. Hey, you're smart, Greg. I learned to add two and two a long time ago in night school. I figured Blondie would have a chaperone hidden somewhere in the woodwork. When a great lover boy like me came calling. I asked Kirby to be here in case you insisted on questioning him. Sure. Okay, I'm insisting. What about these jewels, Kirby? They're like Myrna told you. Me and her was working in together, stealing them. And you didn't kill Stacy Crocker? No. I only knew he was on his way to tip you off to our racket. So he could cut in on the insurance reward you'd collect. Well, so much for that. Now, tell me about Joey Florio. I never met the guy. But you telephoned me Florio was at the Freedom Hotel on the Bowery. I telephoned you? Let's not get cute now, Kirby. Okay, it was me. I wanted to get you out of the way so Myrna here could frisk Crocker. How'd you know Crocker was in my office at all? And in the, uh, defunct state he was in? I tailed him to your place. I was downstairs waiting when a cleaning lady came running out into the street to tell the whole neighborhood that somebody would shoved a knife in a merchant sailor upstairs. Smart boy, Kirby. You've got all your answers worked out. Well, it's the truth. You've cooked up a cute story, you two. But it's as phony as Blondie's eyelashes. Are you always so cynical, Mr. Craig? No, I believe everything I hear. 
but only on the eighth day of the week. Nice try, kids. I hope Joey Florio appreciates what you both tried to do for him. Florio, but we told you I repeatedly... Up, Marna. I oh. told you there was no use coming clean with Craig. Clean as last winter's unwashed socks. Do I walk out of here standing up, or do you two connivers have other plans for me? Maybe I have got other plans. Then for safety's sake, maybe I'd better take certain precautions. Oh. Bring him to, beautiful. Murder in Kirby's big try and big lie on behalf of Joey Florio was as easy to read as the ABC on a kindergarten blackboard. They'd outsmarted themselves the way phonies always do. I'd been fed a melancholy lie in a room lousy with monograms. Monograms on the sofa pillow, on the tablecloth, even on the silk lounging pajamas Blondie's been wearing. The monogram? J.F. J.F. for Joey Florio. It all boiled down to one simple truth. I didn't have to be the seventh son of a gypsy to figure it out. Florio planned to leave justice, follow away the bondsman and the USA behind him. Not by plane, but on the Star of Sharon. Stacy Crockett come to sell me that when somebody stopped him. Then Kirby and Blondie did what they could to stop me from identifying Crocker. From tying Crocker in with the Star of Sharon. I was in a doorway along the waterfront at the quarter to midnight, 15 minutes before sailing time. It was a cop assigned by Trail Rogers on six posts, watching the Star of Sharon until it sailed. Everything was as quiet as a graveyard for a while. Then the fireworks began with a rush. First came a scream. A woman screaming her head off around some dark corner. The cop on detail went running toward the screen, waving a service gun. <laughs> I stood pat in the doorway. It was a decoy trick. It had whiskers on it. If it wasn't, even a woman getting herself murdered somewhere couldn't get me away from the star of Sharon. I played it right. With a cop diverted, a car rolled up to a fast stop right in front of the pier. I watched the guy jump out and the car shoot away. I didn't have to guess who. Bail jumper Joey Florio, catching a freighter at the last minute. He was running for the gangplank when I fired a warning shot. Florio, stop where you are! Florio stopped cold and I went across to get him. Somebody had other plans for Florio. Somebody with a stuttering typewriter. <laughs> When I finally got over to Florio, he had more holes in him than a Swiss cheese. The police took over. The last I saw of Lieutenant Rogers, he was hitching a ride on the morgue wagon. I caught a cab to the home of Sam Soloway, bail bondsman. I had enough for a cruise around the moon and back coming to me. If I could sell a corpse to Sam... Hello, Sam. Greg. Uh, this time of night. I never sleep. Too many guns going off. Still want Joey Florio? I still want my $50,000. Is it still 10% for me? Bargains, bargain. In cash, right away. Right away? Well, it's crazy. It's after midnight. I know you keep that much cash on you. Guys get themselves in trouble with the law at all hours. I've seen you come running to post cash bond in the middle of the night. <laughs> Craig, you're a regular fox. All right, Cash. Here. Fifty hundred dollar bills. Now, when have you got Joey Florio on? I turned them over to the morgue wagon. The morgue wagon? Florio was machine gunned to death less than an hour ago. What? Florio was murdered? Yeah. But he isn't worth crying over, Sam, so dry your tears. But she's worth crying over, Sam. Is she? That girl in the picture on your desk. Who is she? My daughter, Hannah. Hannah? Huh. I know her as a hat check girl calling herself Myrna Wilson. You didn't really expect to get away with it, did you, Sam? No, no, I guess not. All I wanted to do was see Joey Florio dead. And you sure did that. I didn't have to be too bright to know that you had some hidden motive in bailing out a bad risk like Joey Florio. I wanted him out of jail, in the open, where I could kill him. So you hired me to lead you to him, before he either got away or the police steal him off from your vengeance. Then you followed me around while I looked for Florio. Yes, yes. He turned my daughter's head 
He dishonored me. I wanted to kill him myself. I'm sorry, Sam. Sorry you were fool enough to take the law in your own hands. Uh, you want your 5000 back? Huh. Keep it, Craig. You earned it. You're a good investigator. The trouble you're in, you'll need it, Sam. So I'm giving it back. <laughs> that much money, I get fat and lazy. Besides, I didn't really earn it. As it turned out, I didn't catch up with Florida. Get your hat, Sam. On our way to police headquarters, we'll hire you a good lawyer. Maybe it won't go too hard on you. For exterminating a rat. <laughs> Rest your feet in my business every chance you get. Any raised surface handy. Off go your shoes and off go your feet. Ah, you drowse off wondering about things. Things like the bittersweet memories of an old song can stir up. A golden girl named Gloria and a portable victrola in a park rowboat. You wonder about the crazy anger that changes a sad-faced little bondsman into a murderer. Salloway. Poor sad-faced Salloway. How will it go with him in court, you wonder? And you worry. You worry. Good night, folks. See you next week. to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Corpse on Delivery, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story of the borrowed knife about which Barry Craig has this to say. One thing about marriage, folks, many are made in heaven, but there are others that are unmade by the forced application of the vow unto death do us part. See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Myrna was Amsie Strickland. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Don Pardo speaking. Now it's Meredith Wilson's music room on NBC.